Oh, welcome, welcome, everybody. Ooh. Oh, what do you see there on the title? Oh, yeah. CVPS The God Strikes Again. We have something pretty exciting and new here. It's currently 8 o'clock in the morning. And um, I just, like, totally messed up my sleep schedule. Because I went to bed, but then woke up after just five hours. So I don't know what I'm going to do. Probably have a nap in the middle of the afternoon or something. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We uh, have something pretty exciting going on here. Kill counters are in. So... As far as I know, this has never really been done on the PvP scene. Uh, and it's um, it's going to be quite revealing to see exactly how many kills. Like, people have a general sense of how many kills happen per game. Because, like, you know what you get from top stats and whatever quite frequently. But, do people necessarily know, like, across the entire team? Because you might get top kills on your team, but not having actually seen every single kill. Well, here... We will actually have a little bit of that going on. So I've not exhausted all the features yet, but we've got so many new things going on. I need to keep practicing to keep up with the feature bloat that I'm adding in here, basically. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to start the stream off. And um, I will see you all in just a moment. We are looking at Balthazar's Brawl. We're looking at an opening for enrollment in just one minute okay so you guys can totally join this i'm going to be casting this on the north america side because i'm not i'm assuming that not many people eu are up but west coast na probably has got something going on maybe even some ocx people are around right now this could even be sort of ocx prime i don't know for sure i've realized there's four tawnies a day not three i was saying that there were three tawnies but there's actually four so yeah we will see how that looks um and uh yeah do say hi in chat guys and i will see you all in just a moment
Alrighty then. Hello everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, it's good to see some people in chat here. Yeah, this is some seriously dead hour, right? I don't know. We'll see. It's funny because this is when potato for breakfast used to start. When I first started this about two years ago. It was always around now. I think I started at 8am and I ended at midday or 1 o'clock or something. Um, that's what potatoes for breakfast was. And now nobody expects it at all. And we realise it's actually a pretty dead hour of the day. Uh, but yeah, it's good to see you guys. Carito, you have a test in seven hours and you should be in bed. <laughs> but I'm streaming. <laughs> I'm happy that I'm basically your source of procrastination just as uh, whatever was for me when I was uh, putting off doing tests and studying for tests and probably sleeping before tests. Yeah, that's not a very good idea. Uh, yeah, it's 3 a.m. for you, cool So That puts you, what, East Coast United States? Um, so it's good to see you made it at least. Um, McMinna, not too bad. Oh, you're up early to ring the doctors. I uh, hope you're doing good. I hope that's not a big problem. Termia, hello. Hey, it's good to see you. Hope you're having a good morning as well. And you just fo finished watching the most recent episode, Langdus, of the LP. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, people seem to... Uh, the viewership is tapering off on it now. It's at the point... It's rapidly decelerating to the point that I thought it was going to be. So that's a bit of a shame. But, I mean, we made it about 10 episodes further than I thought we were going to before we sort of uh, plummeted our average right down. Um, but yeah, we've only got about 6k people that are still actually going with it right when the episode comes out. Um, and, uh, I, th I expect that to continue dipping, but I'm glad you enjoyed the Ask on Cat, because I thought it was a lot of fun. I really didn't want to die, so Karita, you said I cri you cried when I didn't get the Vengeance Rally. I really didn't want to die. I was tempted to even, like, cheat and basically just sneaky, sneaky, um, cut around that in the, uh, the, the footage. But uh, it would have been stupid and deceitful. I didn't really care that much. So, uh, but it would have been great to not have had any deaths because um, I have another moment that I think would be much better later. Uh, but maybe uh, we'll have to wait and see how, how things go there. I'm not going to tip my hand too much. People are speculating on the next character as well. So some of you did guess it right. We are going Asura. I haven't seen anyone guess exactly why. You know, that nobody's got it exactly correct just yet. But we are going to Sura, and um, some people have been guessing at the profession as well. Uh, some people thought I'd go Norn because I was going to copy the races trailer, but no, we haven't gone Norn. Um, but yeah, good morning. It's prime time Australia, is it Termla? So we'll see how those Aussies do. We are going to be spectating on NA. It's good to see you, Sam's, uh, Sam's on it. And uh, the Dark Lord, 1987. It's good to see you too. All right, so guys... It's pretty exciting. There have been some new developments here. Um, let's go in game for a second. There have been some new developments um, from CVPCS. And uh, uh, I know that not many of you are around right now, but this is very hype. This could be potentially one of the most hype uh, casts we've done so far. And that's because what we're currently looking at is kill counters being in. So what's going to happen, guys, is during the game, as members of the blue team die... As members of the red team die, they will score points for the opposing team. And we now have a way of tracking that as the game goes along. So every time a kill goes through, you will see it tallies a number up. I wanted to do tally marks, but I don't really know how to work that without like a crazy font and some like other coordination from CVP. So we don't, we don't have to worry about that too much. But yeah, it, it should be pretty cool. Um, and uh, hopefully we get a good uh, experience for you all. Let's uh, see how long till the tournament actually begins here um, by going to the tournament window. We've got seven minutes. Enrollment is available right now. Only two teams have even registered for the Balthazar's Brawl right now. Only two goddamn... Oh no, four teams. So please do join this, guys. Last I showed you was Grant's game, which was amazing. And we had a ton of different... Uh, on the EU anyway. I guess the NA one's pretty... Which one's biggest for NA? This is the biggest that NA gets. It's Lissa's Legions. And it was the one I was slept through a minute ago. So Lissa's Legions is the biggest one for NA. Uh, yesterday's Balthazar Brawl, we don't know how many came in. But hopefully lots of people do sign up. I mean, I guess we'll have to see. But so far, only four people. Should I quickly swap back to EU and see how many people signed up on EU? There might be more over there. Should we see? Even at this dead hour? I'm going to see. I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to try and figure this out. Hold on. Because we've got six minutes. I should be able to get at least two world transfers in. If we go over there and we realise the EU is tiny, we will uh, we'll come back to NA. We should have time to do two transfers. It's going to put a bit of stress on reading it there, but that's fine. Uh, so hopefully we're all good. 
Um, Carito says, is it because the next dungeon involves Zoja? That's a good little theory. Certainly. Maybe. Maybe we'll just have to see. I'm actually a little bit disappointed. One of the things I didn't quite do on the LP was... Um, uh, one of the things that I messed up was... Uh, I wanted the this episode that just came out to start with the audio of the Asura at the Black Citadel Gate. And I messed it up and I forgot. And so it was different audio. It was just some generic stuff about the brand, which, I mean, Christ, that doesn't even mean anything, right? So really, really, really lame. Good morning, Kendrent. Uh, it's good to see you. Hope you're having a good day. All right, so just logging into EU here now. And let's see uh, very briefly. <clears throat> As reshade loads itself up. So we had four teams currently live on NA. If there's already like eight on EU right now, I will do the EU version. So what are we looking at? Balthazar's Brawl. No, it's the same as well. EU is pretty much dead too. Was this a bad idea? Chat dead. Viewership dead. Tournament's dead. Is Balthazar's Brawl doomed to be like crappy and probably something we shouldn't cast? Is the uh, level 41 Cordicus's Manor? It is indeed, yes. The next dungeon is Cordicus's Manor. Um, it goes Ascon Catacombs, Cordicus Manor. We're going back to NA, obviously, guys. Uh, uh, Ascon Catacombs, Cordicus's Manor, Twilight Arbor, Sorrow's Embrace, Citadel of Flame. And then I always mix these two up. I'm pretty sure next one, though, is Honor of the Waves. Followed by COE, and then we end in a raw. So that's that's the order. Good afternoon, Duana Salad. Afternoon? Why the hell are you that it's the afternoon? You have to be somewhere. You must be Australia, surely, right? Or something? I mean, afternoon, though. Maybe you're like Korea or something. I don't know. All right, anyway. So, uh, yeah, we're back on NA. The letter from your herald says Zoja will be attending at a, a party at Cordicus's Manor. It does indeed. That's the story of um, uh, of Cordicus's Manor, yeah, at level 40. What I just said there was completely nonsense and unnecessary. So four teams. Jesus Christ, guys. All right, tournament starts in three minutes. I will see you all in a second. Let's get amped up here, guys. Come on, I, wa I want some good chat and feedback on this. Here we go. Let's see it. Ha! <laughs> 
All right, guys. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to Balthazar's Brawl. Let's get it going. Uh, Terminal says, are you timing your LP to the release, re-release of season one that you secretly know about? That would be an even better twist than the solo do dungeons. As much as I wish that was actually true. <laughs> unfortunately, I uh, know I have no knowledge of a secret dungeon. Um, uh, sorry, a secret season one re-release. I, I have absolutely no understanding of that. Uh, but yeah, so welcome guys. It's the Balthazar's Brawl. We're looking at the automated tournament. Uh, with the first place prize being 25 gold, uh, 5 mystic coins, and 50 of those sweet, sweet QP that eventually will get you access to the Cormier's Clash. Uh, moving over to the live matches, we had 8 teams, so we're going to be starting in quarters. Uh, and it looks like one of them at least is a guild team. It's two ones, one Horcrux. So uh, that's the one that we're going to be watching here. They are on Temple of the Silent Storm. Let's go over to the uh, lobby and see exactly what uh, we're going to be working with. Go straight over into the match itself. Um, as you know, I want to watch two ones, one Horcrux. Look at these guys. Look at this cool icon they've got and everything. That actually looks like a Hogwarts icon. Oh my god. You guys, the Chamber of Secrets. Hello. That's so cool. We're going to watch the, the, the Harry Potter guys, whose comp we haven't dissected, by the way, but whatever. So uh, both teams send Mesmers to close. Just as I predicted, by the way, the Cold Foamers are sending their warrior too far. So we're going to see a 1v1 there. We'll keep our eye on it. But for now, let's keep an eye on the uh, Horcrux team going in for the mid-fight. Early Ghastly Breach from one team. The Horcruxes don't get their Ghastly Breach because of Crazy CC. Does he get the Desert Shroud? He doesn't. So uh, there's a rally race uh, uh, going on in mid immediately. Where's the Downstate Ranger? I don't even know. Oh, he's over on the side. The Stomp goes through on the on the uh, Ranger. So that means that Horcruxes are actually managing to win the mid fight. They scored one kill. Here comes the second kill coming through right now. Um, right there on the node. And then there's the third. So big wipes there. Good job to the Horcruxes. They had a difficult start. Meanwhile, remember they did have a cross here. So let's check out how the Horcruxes deal with this. They've got, uh, their Mesmer, their Chrono, uh, occupied by the 1v1. The Chrono's been plussed as well now at this point. Uh, by the enemy team that are obviously on respawn. It's a Condi Mirage. He casts a lot of stuff through his confusion and he does go down. Um, he's not, it's not the end of the world though because he survived just long enough for his respawning allies from mid to come through. Lots of Condi bursts coming out here. They go for the res, forcing the warrior away while he's uh, got resistance on him. So that's very good. Blue team with the Horcruxes taking their close node now. And they really actually need to stop this full cap from going through. They won a good mid. But now do they actually manage to reclaim their side in time? It looks like they're taking a lot of pressure. Interesting running the Ether Feast here, by the way, on this build. And they score another two kills. So lots of kills coming down. Meanwhile, over at mid, you have actually seen the Cold Foamers have scored two kills. Uh, they actually have been doing very well here. Unfortunately, it looks like the Horcrux guys have been left alone at mid for too long. That engagement on close we were watching... Uh, just didn't manifest in anything. He goes for the high value mantra there. And he actually manages to get it. Come on, pop it. The last tick. Doesn't manage to get the resistance back. So down he goes. Horcrux is also not in position to actually res their support. So that's pretty bad. Their scourges are rotating in. Here we go. Oh, right at the last second. Is he on blood? He is on blood. The well of blood's down. Does he get the interrupt on the enemy? No, he doesn't. The cold foamers do secure that stomp. That puts uh, the um, cold foamers up another point at the very least. Cold foamers also beautifully just stole a sneaky decap there while fighting and putting a lot of pressure down on mid. Uh, though they are starting to drop, we see that the Horcrux 
Warcrux blue team. They get a, a plenty of Scourge pressure. Holding that node. Look at how low so many of their opponents are. Some Condies on them, but not too many. It actually looks like Horcruxes might lose this mid-fight. They have actually now lost both sides, and mid has flipped in the enemy team's favor. No, they're not going to lose the mid-fight. They actually managed to secure it here. So a Stomp comes down from the Mesmer. More Condi pressure hitting the Cold Framers. So we're actually seeing that the Horcrux team is able to fight, but they're not able to rotate right now. And the Horcruxes are so starting to lose it on the rest of the board. Uh, they finally managed to get a little bit of far point aggression here from this Mesmer. Uh, he's not running portal, so he can't aggressively port that. He's actually going to look to defend that in a 1v1. If he just zergs off, he's not going to do particularly well. There's another rally race in progress here, but the Scourge did get res, so that's excellent for the Horcrux players. It's just a little bit too zerg heavy right now. And they still haven't decapped mid. Still no decap. This is huge. Like, they've been winning the team fight. They've been getting point score, but they're not actually getting that deep. Finally, they managed to get that. Now let's watch the 1v1, as I mentioned here, that this guy actually needed to defend. He's reliant on stealth and a little bit of mobility, so instant nuke comes through. We're watching the Cold Foamers re-neutralize those nodes so fast right now that they are managing to keep in the lead, despite not having anywhere near as many kills as the Hogwarts crew are. Hogwarts on twice as many kills, but just because they haven't managed to work on those nodes well enough with their footwork, we are seeing the Cold Foamers in the lead overall. Stillness is up. It's extremely important that stillness goes well for these teams right now. Sana gets the beautiful knock there. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, sorry. Did he get the knock? I think he might have knocked someone down a hole, but another Cold Foamer has managed to rotate in. Uh, Cold Foamer's also managing to take the 1v1 at the last possible moment here. It's actually not all over. He gets the kill with the confusion. This is kind of interesting, actually, because that rogue could hit extremely hard. I think, so it was 4k. He didn't land the crit, actually, I guess, because he's on the Condi build. So we are going to see that the Necromancer ends up taking that uh, down v down, and no pluses are in position. This plus, unfortunately, just a little little bit late please no target me only rotating in at the last possible moment he will get a quick kill hopefully with this warlock though blows the gravity well to snap that down i would have used that to defend your node later an over rotation from their uh, support as well what actually happened at stillness uh well hogwarts did get stillness that's good we're actually looking at two cap v two cap right now luana going for the decap though this is so huge for the cold foamers and once again they get that hogwarts need to stick on their nodes a little bit more they just had a double cap removed from them that's super 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 punishing i'm now noticing by the way that Hogwarts are fielding a greatsword guardian called Moaning Myrtle. Getting that RP on. Very, very, very powerful here. <laughs> uh, but they've now been um, double capped. Their close is against them from the Cold Famers. And mid is against them. Does their support actually secure that decap? They do. So that's actually pretty nice. Uh, they're playing for time probably for one more minute when double cap comes up. Looking back over here as well, you can see that uh, this uh, Hogwarts Mesmer is looking to defend his close point. Does he get neutralized? Look at these newts coming in. Cold Foamers constantly decapping. And even starting to equalize on kills a little bit here. Uh, the Ghastly Breach goes down um, against in this 1v1, and it was absolutely pointless. So I think we will actually see that the uh, Hogwarts crew win that. They also look like they're about to win mid here. Um, it might take them a little bit of time, though. And close! Oh my god, we've actually seen Hogwarts get the, uh, the sweep here. They've got their close point. It totally looks like they've just got mid. And the 1v1 over here... They're going to get this as well. The stomp actually uh, failed. I think he was going for some kind of phase retreat stomp. If he manages to get this quickly enough, we'll see. Yeah, good job to 2 ones one Horcrux here. Oh my god, finish the kill. Finish the kill. The pluses are coming in. He still hasn't got it. He's been double feared. <laughs> the rally won't go through now either. Uh, their support doesn't do very well to actually heal his ally up. Don't worry about standing on this node, man. It's their node. Don't worry about it. Just get the heals on your friend. Okay, and in three seconds, we are looking at double cap come up. Neither team ready for stillness right now, but moving down to tranquility, we can see there's a 1v1. We've got Moaning Myrtle, who is not a duelist build. This is more of a DPS build, fighting against the Spellbreaker. Moaning Myrtle's best play right now is not to actually go for a kill. It's to go for um, just the harass and preventing the cap. Uh, the worst thing in the world is if they die here. It looks like the Spellbreaker is starting to unload a little bit of damage. They're actually doing incredible damage to the Spellbreaker here. Oh, but look, see, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Murning Myrtle goes down. They play too aggressive. I didn't think they'd ever win that on a fair 1v1. And by losing that, Moaning Myrtle may have just thrown for the Hogwarts team here. But look how many kills Hogwarts is on there on 17, guys. So Trip Cap is going to be rolling through for the Cold Foamers. Meanwhile, over at Stillness, if Cold Foamers can take this too, they'll be in an extremely dominant position. Cold Foamers is actually winning the Stillness fight. Trip Cap rolls through. There's the bell. None of Hogwarts is in position to sustain that. 
The support moves over. Trip cap landing as well. And unfortunately, guys, you are going to see the kill counters break here. Um, this is the one situation where the kill counters break. And the very first game that we're spectating, it's actually happened. Uh, I think you saw a couple of accidental kills flip for the red team there. Just because there was a plus six point score that came in. But you can ignore that, okay? Because one of the neutralizations at least landed super fast. Um... But Hogwarts now have just completely lost their head. They've got a huge, huge buffer now. A hundred extra points going through to the Cold Foamers. Uh, let's see how Moaning Myrtle continues to do this fight here. Only on 800 health. Needs to bail out. Doesn't quite manage to. They've got to get the Rally Race won. Please no target me. Instead goes for a res instead of winning the Rally Race. Here's the Vengeance. The Vengeance stopped coming down on Moaning Myrtle. And he actually lands it. Even worse, the Devastation. The Cold Foamers get full Rally value from this. He is not in Vengeance anymore. He... Oh, no, no. He is still in Vengeance. Okay, my mistake. He is still in Vengeance. <laughs> I thought I was misreading the uh, the active effects there. Okay, so that's fine. But still, they lost the mid-fight over that. Very, very brutal. The Vengeance stomps. Always such huge plays. Let's see what else um hogwarts have got to get in this they basically have their home they're getting a decap on far so this is excellent i think that this player here should actually just go for the decap and then run straight to mid they need to swing mid now and play quite aggressively uh basically play rotationally around that warrior and hopefully assist these guys actually i was wrong they've managed to get uh mid on all in their lonesome that's great so they're now denying cold foamers all their points if they want to continue denying cold foamers their points the uh support over here needs to sustain for ages he does stay alive just long enough to get his plus in from his scourge we're looking at the five round scourge combo right now this is really good excellent conservative use of these uh mantras here as well he hasn't overblown them the pain train comes in from their scourge this five round scourge winning on close here is actually really 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 important i think he's going to get the kill over here actually um so so good there actually for hogwarts winning this 2v2 is brilliant all they need to do as well is sustain this oh they didn't sustain in mids oh or at, f at far they didn't sustain at either of these two nodes that's so terrible stillness is up neither team in position to aggress this so the cold foamers with excellent wins over here um in mid and at far. And I think with that, you are going to probably see Cold Foamers take it. Stillness just flapped it, uh, swapped here for the Cold Foamers. They're getting four points a second. And all they really need to do is bunk this win condition for the Cold Foamers is for Luana Sky to stand here and make sure no decap comes through. And indeed, we see that happen. So, oh, I really wanted you to win, Hogwarts crew. Oh my god. Anyone that... Look at that. Look at the RP, guys. They have Moaning Myrtle with them. They have... The Chamber of Secrets, two ones, one Horcrux. They've got that cool ass icon. Look at this. It's beautiful. But you got beat out by the Cold Foamers, I'm afraid. Looking at the timeline here. Look, they, they had it. It was within their grasp here, but Trip Cap was not played well. I don't mean to point fingers, but I do think Moaning Myrtle losing that Trip Cap there by playing overly aggressive in the fight actually lost the entire game on that play. I'm really glad that we managed to see that there on the spectating too. Um, because after that, they just completely lost it. Uh, but there you have it. Plenty of flips on either side. We do actually see that mid was majority red held though. And that just goes to show the Cold Foamers take the win despite having three less kills than two ones, one, one Horcrux. So let's have a look at the uh, post-game lobby here. I want to uh, fill in the teams now. And uh, what do we actually see? So for the uh, Hogwarts crew, they have this. I'm so sorry, guys. I don't know how the lobby music turned up. The music rip. Oh, my God. If I farted, it would be louder than WP's voice right now. <laughs> I don't know how that turned up. What happened there? I never messed with that audio volume. I never messed with that. When did that turn up? I'm so sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. That's so bad. I actually have no... It's good volume now, right? It's okay now. How was that maxed out? That's insane. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the track. It is a nice track, isn't it?
<laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, let's go back to the lobby, guys. And let's see uh, what we've got going on now for the next live matches. Balthazar's Brawl. The Cold Firmers have gone through to the next round here, it looks like. And they will be facing off against more Cold Foamers. Uh, they're going to be on Skyhammer. Uh, so they're going to be on Skyhammer. Let's see. So the Cold Foamers we were looking at before, they are red team again. So that's a good for us. Uh, let's see here. So first of all, they have their uh, Comedy Chrono. <clears throat> they have a Scourge that put in the big damage. They have their Duelist Warrior, probably picking up close. They have another Scourge put in the big damage. And then finally, they have... Uh, who is this? This is a Warrior here, actually. So... Uh, yeah, that's going to be the red team. Moving over to look at blue as well. Uh, let's see what they've got. First, we have K-Pop Star, uh, who is running Demo Me uh Actually, this is Burst Fez, so this is a little bit more rotate heavy. So we'll put that over there. They're running a Firebrand Support. <clears throat> they are running uh, a Scourge for the big damage, Ghastly Breach. They have their Chrono, I will put that in a Duelist capacity. And then they actually have a Hollow here, this uh, this last holo Hollow here, this... Uh, what we'll, we'll, we'll flip that again. Should, go for it. Should get the actual Holo Hollow's name, who was uh, swapping their characters right here. There you go. Uh, so yeah, they got their Hollow. So I actually think that the blue Cold Foamers are definitely favoured on this one. Um, but it depends how much, I guess, the red Cold Foamers can make use of Miss Otaku. Their, uh, uh, sorry, Luana Sky, where they'll probably be pushing far. So let's see how this goes. Watching the opening splits, we're going to be watching the red Cold Foamers as they come out, since this is the team that we saw win the last round. If you want to follow a team, go through. It's the red Cold Foamers that you're going to be looking for the win. Let's put the game audio on as well. I didn't have that set up. Dum, dum, dum. Double Scourge, neither of them taken up to the side. They're all just clustering onto the node extremely quick. They get Prime Light Beam. They don't have much Life Force rolling around just yet. The CC train stops any kind of sand flare coming in. No elite was popped. The red cold foamers really did not play that mid fight well at all. Look at the crazy kills coming down. That's insane. So many kills so quickly. I think, in fact, that might have. There were two conditions where the kill counter breaks. I think we've actually seen break there. I cannot believe how hard they just got wiped there. That was actually insane. Yeah, the two. Con basically, the only way that the kill counter breaks is if people die extremely too fast. And so there should be four kills right now for Cold Foamers, but it's only red as one. Um, meanwhile, by the way, holy shit, where did the other kill land? Where did the red, how did red Cold Foamers score a kill? I didn't see that. Oh, I think that there was a bit of a bug there. CVPCS is going to be watching this VOD, guys, so we will see exactly how that works. This looks like a hot join farm map. What is going on? The blue Cold Foamers, yes, I said were compositionally stronger, but they basically just push straight through their spawn point farming now. My god. Um, they've uh, had their aggression on far the entire time. Yeah, that was a pretty uh, ridiculous engage from Red, to be honest. Uh, Red is actually just straight up being farmed here. Just straight up being farmed. I think that this is not really a real match. Let's see how the kill counter works from now on, though. So two kills, three kills go down all together. Basically, it's... if. If more, th if more than two kills happens within a 0.7 seconds period, uh, the kill counter will break. So let's watch the kill counters as Cold Farmers get their farm on here. Okay. So Cold Farmers have scored at least, what, like eight kills this game at least. Probably more like nine kills. And the kill counter's only read three. Which is, actually, so the kill counter worked fine on that one. It got all four of those perfectly fine. But the kill counter didn't work on the original engagement. Yeah, run in, die without using heal or really. Or dodges, actually. I think it was just the CC train. Um, so, yeah, Blue Cold Foam is taking this. Devastatingly powerful. Very, very, very strong. The Red Cold Foam is can't even get out of base. They're not fielding anyone who can sneak past with stealth. Start scoring decaps. So, the entire team just stands here. This is a good little demonstration uh, for you guys, actually, of uh, the way that the game can go quite often. <clears throat> uh... So let's just watch this, I guess. We'll put the big mini back, back down. Uh, if you can imagine that the, the red team had 
someone who could rotate fast and with stealth, if you can imagine that. He could sneak off, and with two neutralizations, you basically bait two of the blue guys back, thus giving you a numbers advantage at your door, and you should be able to win the numbers advantage. Should be able to. Uh, you guys will also see the frame rate is a little bit low. I have been catching that. I do realize what's going on. Like, right now, you're at 60, but sometimes when I go free cam, I have noticed it drops to, like, 45, the choppiness people have been talking about. I think I can fix that, but it's going to take some uh, more efficient screenshotting and things going on. So we'll have to be careful. Cut the video. This is 2PG13. What? Um, so, yeah, 13 kills for the cold foamers. Where did the red cold foamers get a kill? Did I actually miss them getting a... How is the kill count of red as a kill there? How has that happened? They have 15 points. That does sort of suggest... I don't know, man. Did they get one? This is a demonstration of why you don't suicide middle and then solo run in and die on repeat. Yeah, basically. Uh, basically. Can we see any plays being made? Oh, they are actually getting some damage down here. They are getting some damage. Look at how low this Mesmer is. He's, he's at 1%. Somebody kill Saber. Please, somebody run at Saber. You, the big juice. Go. Kill Saber. That's it. Keep him in combat. Keep him in combat. He is still in combat. Here. Oh, no, no, no. I think he's got combat break. No, no, no. He hasn't. That was just a Mirage Mirror. Go down, big juice. Please score a kill. Go down. Oh, I know he can't see him. When you mumble. I don't think I've mumbled once, but thanks for that. Uh, this overlay with the skills is pretty good. Oh, sorry. You mean the, the pre and post game lobby? Yeah, that's got the best reception to everything so far. 18 kills for the cold foamers right now. They are just continuing to farm. This is basically a uh, Red Resigns match here. <laughs> this is the daily room and we're watching it in the tourney. So let's watch this unsupported Scourge. How far he can get. Does he get the neutralization on point C? The Horde comes along. He doesn't even Desert Shroud, man. Come on, Ghastly Breach Desert Shroud. Put the pain train down. Did he dodge onto the node at the start as well, Valen? Is that what I saw? Did he dodge onto the node? Yeah, so uh, this is actually a really efficient rank farm, guys, because it gives the winning team, like, 10 gold as well at the same time. Each rung you go up in these tourneys, it gives you extra gold. So, uh, so yeah, I think uh, the blue cold foamers, by the way, we're going to see do very, very, very well here uh, in the tournament. To have such a slam punk victory against a team, the red cold foamers, that we know actually do have the capacity to win against others. That red team had families. Um, and so, yeah, there you go. Listen, a slam dunk like this, what, what have we got to enjoy here? Just watching the kills go up. 22. How high do you think it will go? Now that we got kill counters, I can do cool stuff like betting. Like, we can set up gem bets and stuff, guys. It's great. It's like, you can guess how many kills for either team. And, uh, and whoever guesses exactly right wins gems at the end of the game, for example. We could do that during the monthly. And we would do a gem giveaway basically for every match. That would get you guys a little bit more invested. I want to do giveaways, though, that get chat moving a lot. Because chat... I, I know it's PvP, and my normal audience don't care too much about PvP and whatever. But I really want chat to be moving faster. So uh, we'll try and do something like that to fake it. I don't know. But there you go. 24 kills for the blue gold phobas. Moving back to the post-game lobby. What do we have here? Well. I mean, we don't even... So, just looking at the team fight. Support, Firebrand, Scourge, and Hollow. That's like the dream combo. They were basically facing it off against a Mesmer and two Scourges. So, if you just think about it in those terms, and those terms alone. Obviously, the blue team fight is better. We're looking purely at the left-hand side of the screen right now. The blue team fight is way, way, way better. And I think with that, you're just obviously going to see the one pulls through. Um, so, yeah. Moving back to this lobby. We've got Grant's game continuing along. Uh, not Grant's game. Uh, so, the cold foamers go through to Sammy's now. And uh, they will be facing off. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a highlight on this as well, guys. Get ready. There will be a highlight. Whoa. It's going to be good. Um, uh, for the finals, we'll do highlights. Music still loud. It's too what on this screen? You think the music is too loud on this screen? Really? All right, there you go. I've turned it down a little bit more. You've you you you've got it a little bit lower. Which screen was it too loud on? Sorry. 
At some point, you'll manage to convince your friends to play some PvP with me. This looks fun. It is fun. It's very, very, very fun. Especially if you're able to just farm. <laughs> I'm pretty sure a stomp of this magnitude is illegal. Well, that's what you get. I mean, this is supposed to be OCX's time zone. But what do we get here? We had uh, how many teams enrolled in this? Eight in the end, I think it was. You're talking about the music on the skill preview scene. You think that that's still too loud? Okay, so hold on. Let me put this one back fine. You think this is too loud here? Um, so I'll put you down to there. Okay, so does that sound good now? One thing I suck at with streaming is, is basically knowing... Uh... So by the way, there's some other stuff as well. If you look at the lobby, you see the skill bar there? That skill bar I set up, right? Um... Because it, it was constantly showing my skills in a weird way. And it was like, well, you know, we're, we're clear on the lobby here. That we're waiting for a new team to come in. There's, there's, no, there's nothing going on. So why do we see random elemental skills or something? So what I did was uh, I actually, I'm loaded in on actual wooden potatoes now. So wooden potatoes will appear as the spectator in the lobbies for the players and whatever. So that's nice. But also I've turned off all the skills. So, uh... Yeah, we're either spectating player abilities or none. And I think that's the better way to do it. Um, so, yeah. Come back to the lobby here. <clears throat> uh, cold foamers are in the bottom bracket down here. Uh, meanwhile, on the other side, it looks like we've got uh, try-hard trash cans. Um, <laughs> who are the bronze tier heroes? I didn't even notice. Try-hard trash cans? That's another team, isn't it? Oh, I didn't even notice. <laughs> That's fantastic. Calamari, I don't, I, I, I think it is fitting. I like it. So uh, I'm not, I'm not asking for feedback on that. I like the music. Why is the music so overpowering? Is it really still that loud? What the hell? But I had it at about that volume before. Nobody's confirmed to me that it's better now. So what, I'll put it to 22? Is that okay now? Seriously, it was that bad? I'll have to watch the VODs. I am sorry about that. That's going to be so shit from uh, earlier. I don't know why the volume got messed with at all, frankly. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's good music. Simuloi says I think it's fine. Okay, cool. All right, here we go. So Cold Famous. We might see Cold Famers win this now and take the next round on to the uh, Elitist Tri- whatever their name was, I can't remember the Tri- Tri Hard Nerds, was it? We'll have a look in a second. But okay, so uh, yeah, let's um, go over to the lobby. Let's see what we're looking at. First running through the um, blue team, that's the Cold Famers. Starting off, they have uh, their Greatsword Guardian. We already, uh, they've got Greatsword Mesmer, sorry. Then they've got their support. <clears throat> then they have their Scourge. They have their uh, Duelist Chrono build. Looking at the Chrono build, by the way, if you guys are wondering, it's Illusions, it's Chaos, and it's Chrono. Okay? We're looking at Paladin, Leadership Runes, Sword Shield, stuff. All right? So we got that. And then finally, their Hollow. Um, meanwhile, over on the other team, we've got a uh, Firebrand support. Interesting utility skills going on. Look at these utilities here, guys. We're looking at uh, Hold the Line, Stand Your Ground, Retreat. So lots of shouts. Receive the light. Receive the light, everybody. Oh, my God. Uh, the Healing Breeze. Because uh, that's basically what that skill is, right? Healing Breeze, if I remember rightly. Anyway, we've got the Ultimate Bee Arch here, running Bandit's Defense Thief. <clears throat> We have a uh, warrior on the bull's rush, but I still think he's probably more of a side nader right now. We have Banjo, who's running demo sword sword um, on a Mesma build, capable of pushing aside certainly. And then finally, we have a scourge here in the damage capacity. So that's what this looks like. That's the matchups. Get a good look at them. Let's move on into the game itself. We are going to be here on Capricorn. <clears throat> Watching the opening splits, I would expect Mesmers to pick up sides. Okay, actually one of them sends a thief to do that. That's fine. We're watching K-pop Sara as he moves over. Looking over here, let's watch the Cold Foamers with their Necromancer. Head on through. And remember, this is the Cold Foamer team that absolutely devastated their last uh, group. So let's watch the team fight from their perspective. 
Scourge gets on the node. Torch 4 doesn't manifest in too much uh, life force. They get an immediate kill. I mean, who's putting this pressure out? It must be their hollow putting this pressure out, right? Insane. The rally goes off. Ghastly Breach goes down a little bit later. Look at all the boons on the blue team right now. Look at these boons. Uh, red team a little bit less boon heavy, of course. Watching beautifully, we actually see that the red Mesmer pulls out. The Mesmer for, um, sorry, Terminal Gloaming, whose team's name is uh, bugged here. Uh, we see the portal for the return there as well. So beautifully played on by both Mesmers there. That holds side still in the favor as we had on spawn. Mid fight continue to go on. Cold Foamers get their enemy support down. This is excellent. Look how tightly they're clustered together, but they're actually utilizing the AoE from their support really well there. And I think that we do actually see Terminal Gloaming take that mid fight. Uh, and they even managed to... Uh, oh, no, no, no. So they didn't manage, but they got forced off. Banjo on the Terminal Gloaming team, sorry. Uh, managing to take that. It's not Terminal Gloaming that won the mid-fight. It was called Foamers that won the mid-fight. I'm messing up the team names, as always. Uh, so, yeah, we are going to be looking to it taking sides here. Extremely important decap coming from K-Pop Star here, who uh, doesn't have a portal of cooldown to do that mark that aggressively in any way, but really needs that to stop his enemies accelerating away, despite the fact that they've actually been uh, winning on the board. We did see two kills go down for red team. When did the two kills for a red team happen? I didn't see those. Is it, this is amazing. Either the kill count was broken, or it's teaching me something about how low my awareness is on this stuff. So we'll have to keep an eye there. Did really the uh, Terminal Gloaming score two kills so far this game? I don't understand how. So, Cold Foamers really loving their mid fights right now. They've got their four players just crunched together all the time. But they're losing sides over and over again. So, sides flip again. Getting rotated around. Banjo as well for Terminal Gloaming. Dropping a brilliant portal there to hold that. Um, and then they've got their other duelist walking across. We're going to see K-Pop Star facing off against a Spellbreaker in just a second. He's a little bit low. You see he takes the early target. He's going to try and keep him in combat so he doesn't get that out of combat resustain. He does the pressure as fast as possible, getting off of the node. He knows that that's going to be neutral anyway, so may as well take a more favorable team, uh, 1v1. The node's still in favor of the Cold Foamers, who have very securely held mids. But what of the rest of the map? Well, if they can get their two cap now, it looks like they ha do have a rotation coming in at a plus from the Big Juice. Reasonable character to give a plus like this. This is their Chrono. It's actually uh, transformed into a 2v2 because we had pluses on both teams. The Terminal Gloaming Red guys actually had their Thief come in. Who I think I just saw Waste Banded Defense unless my eyes deceive me there. Um, Chrono sustains on the node. Everybody generally pulls out a little bit here. Bella's going to be live soon. you notice that the Cold Foamers have already invested their support to stand on it. Not necessarily the best choice here. Um... Because he can't support his friends, and uh, it's going to be held newt here anyway. The uh, staff line doesn't do anything. Rampage to counter it, so that's pretty good. Bell in play. We see, finally, that the Cold Foamers get their two cap. Uh, they lose it straight away. They lose their mid nodes. But it doesn't matter as long as they actually secure this mid fight. Mid fi uh, the, the Bell fight, sorry. Uh, and which they do currently outnumber just a little bit. We saw another kill go off at mid there, by the way. Uh, that puts Terminal Gloaming in the lead for pure kill points. They've managed to score three with the Cold Flamers just on two. Pushing forward, tons of Condi pressure. I think that was a Ghastly Breach that went onto the node itself. Converts all of those boons that we see uh, the uh, Cold Foamer support throwing out. Basically doing as much attritive damage as possible. It looks like Cold Foamers are winning the big engagements. They're winning this one as well. I think that was an even numbered engagement as well. Uh, whether that means they'll flip Bell though, or they're just going to keep getting chuckled again, remains to be seen. Probably more interesting story here though, is that one of the Cold Foamers, scur the, the Scourge, sorry, the Scourge from the Cold Foamers, is actually being plussed as he tried to reclaim uh, mid. It doesn't really matter that Faded here didn't score mid. It just matters that he doesn't die. Banjo applying the pressure. Faded utilizing the uh, boxes very well here, making sure that he gets lots of good line of sights. He's not going to have a support come into him at any time soon. We actually see... Oh, and then he takes the portal out. That's a beautiful portal bell. I love that play. Oh, my God. They get the Scourge to safety. The Scourge takes full cap. He ports back through as well. If they end up winning this 2v1 now, that's going to be so nice. Banjo's got his work cut out for him. Bell is still basically just neutral here. This is a really intense game, actually. Um... Banjo pressured out of mid here. This is the guy we literally just saw at mid. He ports out just to make sure that that's resustained. And Bell finally at the last second there, actually, because I think that this uh, Terminal Gloaming Mesmer was actually about to get on there. Bell does flip for the Cold Foamers. Now, that may not have looked like too many points just yet, but remember, the next Bell, if, if Cold Foamers can claim that as well, it's worth a hell of a lot more. Banjo taking the easy decap on his close, so that's perfectly fine. Looking back towards the big juice here as he tries to zone enemies away from the mid node if they fully cap it. Um... And so, yeah, we see Cold Foamers take Bell. They resecure their mid nodes. 
And uh, we're also seeing that they're basically defending. They're backnoding here with their hollow. So good two cap. Cold Foam is in an extremely po uh, strong position right now. Uh, as their support basically just continues to hold their Firebrand in the game here. And they pressure the enemy Scourge away who's currently got nothing. But looking at Firebrand, Scourge versus Firebrand, Scourge. With a Chrono dipping around near the edge. And a, um, sorry, a blue Chrono dipping around the edge. And uh, we have this guy as well. Super low actually for Terminal Gloaming right now. Does faded the uh, Cold Foamer Scourge notice. Why would you go into the node with no health? He's just trying to get value out of Rampage, I guess. Insane. He does have his lots of... Oh my god, the uh, resist got stripped slash corrupted super quick there as well. I actually think what we saw was the big juice stripping that with the Phantasmal Disenchanter. Yeah, did you guys catch that? Hell yeah, I did. That's why the resist fell off because he managed to pop that cooldown. And uh, yeah, so really solid two cap. Um, it looks like we're actually seeing Terminal Gloaming get the bell for free. Can they get on? This is going to be so close. Terminal Gloaming really wants this bell. They don't get it in time. So excellent little rotation right here. With Cold Foam has managed to get on that and deny that bell. They're uh, suddenly looking really positive. Not only do they have map control, not only do they have the point buffer, but also they're in a position to team fight very well over this bell. If we're going to see that um, Terminal Gloaming comes back in this, they need to score neutralization over here on this far point for them. And they need to take advantage as soon as uh, the Cold Foamers' backs are turned to take this. But it looks like they're just trickling in. Another kill goes down here um, for the Cold Foamers. And uh, with that Scourge now on respawn, that means that this bell is even less likely to flip in favor of... And another kill goes down. Where was that other kill? I guess it was here at the bell, actually. We, we watched it in progress. Just as I said, decap did need to happen. And Terminal Gloaming managed to secure that away from the Cold Foamers. That's going to bait this hollow away. All eyes are still at Bell. Terminal Gloaming lose. Uh, sorry, the Cold Foam is losing at Bell. Hollow is not in a position to inter interrupt that or anything. We see the Downstate 2 gets the, the small stealth port, but nothing much is going to happen here. The Hollow now is 2v1, just denying this Bell Cap. I don't think he needs to suicide here. All he has to do is sustain until his support gets in. Let's watch that health bar fly back up. Oh my god, and so this is really, really beautiful. Currently, the only nodes in favor of either team is the Cold Foamers. So they are. Uh, Continuing to widen that gulf between the two of them. Sport getting hit extremely hard. But I just think that basically because Terminal Gloaming hasn't been able to snatch these big engagements out. Slowly but surely they've been atrophied down in this game. And look at the support managed to come through beautifully here. We've got support and the hollow. And you can see just the combination of the two. The amount of conversion that they get together. The amount of protection and boom span that they get together is insane. So yes, we see Terminal Gloaming take this bell. Okay. Or at least the fight before the bell. But they had to over-rotate into that. Over-rotating into that means they still don't have mid. And they don't have anyone in position here. Actually, tell a lie. Banjo manages to get a beautiful port. This guy's actually bailing away. Wait, sorry. K-pop star here. Um, in the Mesmer mirror, I think this was. Actually bailing away. He gets onto the bell at the last second. This Scourge should not get off of this. If he loses that cap value, it's gross. So he uh, forces a stealth out. And um, actually, where, where did that stealth come from? It must have been on Torch. The stealth on K-pop star means that the um, Scourge is not uh, any longer contested. And we see the first bell flip in favor of Terminal Gloaming. They're still uh, not winning this game, though. As time progresses, we will see that one team still has more points than the others. They've got to close this buffer of almost 50, uh, just over 50 points here. Uh, looking back towards the mid-fight, because this is obviously the really important bit. Again, the support getting hammered extremely hard. Keeping his guys alive. I think we're looking at a 2v2 in progress here. 3v2. Oh, my God. It's exploding. Actually, terminal climbing. Having taken sides now, have invested almost everyone into mid here. So you might actually see terminal climbing if they can win this fight. Uh, this is going to be a huge swing for their team. They're actually on more kills now than the Cold Foamers. They've been doing very good on those side point skirmishes. The support goes down. It looks like there's going to be a rally race in progress. This support versus the um, Terminal Gloaming Scourge. The support goes down. Red Rang Bell as well. Banjo taking the Sneaky Bell almost under my eyes. So brilliantly now Terminal Gloaming back into the secure position. That was their first bell, but it's all that they needed. They've actually been rotating around so well here. This could have been so terrible after that uh, second bell fell down. Um, and I think it's because, you know, we're actually seeing one of these Mesmers is not able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, one of the blue Mesmers. Seems to be bailing out of engagements. Perhaps because it's GS, he's not actually the full demo duelist build. That could be it. We'll have to have a look at the post-game lobby later. Uh, so, yeah, Cold Foam is now seriously uh, wincing at this one. They've got 50 points to catch up. A value of uh, a big bell that they could be getting next, maybe. But without anything manifesting on sides, this mid-fight isn't going to go anywhere, anywhere soon. Meanwhile, back over uh, here. Again, look, we have the same matchup. Big Juice v. Banjo. 
Uh, so it's Chrono, the Sword Sword demo, I believe. Oh, no, no, no. Banjo's on Condi. Banjo's on Condi. So how does the Chrono deal? The Chrono cannot fight this Condi Mez. Look at this Condi Mez matchup winning here. Banjo is basically making huge plays for his team here. Just Banjo being able to secure that 1v1 every time. That puts so much pressure because now what can Big Juice do? He's not got any worthwhile uh, swing he can make in mid. He ports through to where? Where was his portal there? So he had a portal established all the way over on this node. But, I mean, he's just not getting much value there. He's getting his, basically, ab uh, ability to move around. Here we see even that the Cold Foaming Hollow isn't uh, willing to go up against Banjo on sides. So, um, basically, this guy just being a king here uh, has really allowed his team to start swinging through. He does his Photon Blitz straight into the Shield 5, shoots himself into the face several times. And just like I said, look at the mid-fight, right? Like, it's still in progress. And it's not in favor. Every second here gets closer to the end of the game. And uh, we actually see a glorious comeback from Terminal Gloaming on this one. As they continue to delay that. As Banjo continues to rule the roost over here on this node. He doesn't have a portal established there. But let's look at the minimap, right? Who's in position on the Cold Foamers to get over there? No one, really. And it seems like Terminal Gloaming actually know their win condition is probably this node now. They have both their uh, Roma and Banjo himself uh, still watching over here. This 1v1 is established here with K-Pop Star on the Aggress. Who could do a lot of damages and Combi himself in the fight, maybe? No, no, no. But he... Oh, yeah, I think he might be. And Banjo was low enough at the start that he's been pushed away. So K-Pop Star finally getting that neutralization. Is it too little too late though? They have finally started denying the, the uh, Terminal Gloaming team points. Cold Fame is on the double cap. They finally won mid. Bell will be live again very soon. Oh my god, the swing back again. This is actually kind of huge here right now. Looking over at the Scourge Firebrand combo, just uh, doing work. These guys are going to be looking to rotate to that final bell. If they can secure the, the next bell in the next 180 seconds... They will win the game, so all eyes are going to be rotating towards it here now. In fact, just on timeout, if uh, Terminal Gloom has got a huge job, they have to deny this bell, which is worth a ton of points for the Cold Foamers, but also they need to score these neutralizations or they're lost anyway. K Pop Star takes full cap. That's a three cap come in favor now of the Cold Foamers. They are definitely not out now. Uh, the support's still not rotated through. Here he comes now. Well, let's watch the uh, Scourge as he fights his way through the roads. Scoring kills as well. I don't know, he's not scoring kills. The real story is up here at Yolo Solo Dolo Hollow, who um, has been basically alone at Bell here for a long time. The support finally does come in. Uh, faded up here on the node, dropping the ghastly breach with the denial play. All that the Cold Foamers have to do is uh, hold this. But look at this beautiful D cup coming in from the red team, Roma. Terminal Gloaming, that's such a key play there to actually manage to neutralize that. Another neutralization landing here. With these two neutralizations, we do see that Terminal Gloaming are set to win this game at the timeout. But they have to make sure this bell doesn't go through. It's uh, Cold Foamers fighting for their lives at this bell, going for more kill points. And if they can flip this, they win the game, but they uh, don't have too long. Just 1 minute 45 seconds left on the clock. And that's going to take a long time to manifest. We have seen throughout the rest of the game that the Cold Foamers are winning the big, big engagements. They're actually slightly outnumbered at this one right now. But you can notice here that the uh, Terminal Gloaming are dying. So once again, by the way, sides being reclaimed. YOLO Solo uh, Dolo Hollow claiming one. K-Pop Star claiming the other. While the 3v3 continues at mid. That's going to put Cold Foamers back in the dominant position for the game. They're even going for the trip cap again. Big Juice aiming for the trip cap. Win condition potentially is this node. K-Pop Star seems to think so. So he's just going to hold that. They just need to make sure that Bell doesn't swing anyway with the support firebrand combo still there. And I think that, that final little bit of rotation there at the end of the game does mean that Cold Foamers take the win with just one more kill over their opponents. K-Pop Star being on the defense, he just needs to make sure no neutralization lands here for a few more seconds. Then even if he dies, as long as he doesn't use his skill to port, neutralization won't go through. And there it is. I think we even just saw a kill land at Bell. Cold Foamers taking the win with 12 kills to to 10. A hell of a game. Oh my god, a real back and forth. A real back and forth there on that one. <clears throat> and Terminal Climbing was so close to getting in it. Yeah, I know the overlay was slightly bugged there, guys. Uh, really well-rounded as well. You don't really have any MVP on either team. Look at the top stats, right? Look at the top stats. It's kind of beautiful, actually. Well, very well spread out. Everybody pulling their weight. Let's go to the post-game lobby. And let's uh, think about what we see here again. So, K-Pop Star actually wasn't too... Actually, they were kind of roam heavy, actually. We saw that they actually ended at the far point. Um, so, I do think they were roaming around a reasonable amount. We had the Firebrand support versus Firebrand support. Banjo in this duelist slot here. You saw when they when the uh, when Terminal Gloaming were making plays, 
it was really down to this, right? I think actually that we saw. Um, uh, being able to aggress far. Actually, this matchup, this is exactly what was. This screen is so good. I'm not being funny, guys. I'm not tooting my own horn here. But look at how good this screen is. We literally saw this matchup Banjo versus Big Juice. And Banjo won it every time. Like, well, not every time, but a lot of the time. And we saw that for that reason, we saw this blue node flip in their favor again and again and again. We also saw this Firebrand Hollow uh, uh, set up here doing extreme damage versus the opponent. Oh, the one time we saw, say, this warrior in the team fight, he got deleted. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good, I think. Um, really fun game. And that's the semis. That puts the Balthazar's Brawl into the finals now with the Cold Foamers versus Tyrion Swarm. It looks like the elitist guys were removed. I wanted to see the other guild. There was another guild on the other side of the game there, and they never actually managed to get through it. Aww. What looked like a hard throw, explicit. What, who, who threw there? What do you think? That was good play there, Banjo. That was good play. It's a shame your team never went through there because I think you were really winning for your team at one point. From what I could see, anyway. Mm. What else do we think, guys? <clears throat> uh, so, Tyrion Swarm, we've not seen any of yet. And again, just as, look at this tournament, right? Look at the first team we watched. They won a game, and it was a reasonable game. Then they got destroyed by the Cold Foamers. And then the Cold Foamers had to fight so hard to get here in the finals. It just shows, like, the different tiers of teams, yeah? Um, imagine if we see Tyrion Swarm now defeat the Cold Foamers. That will really show you something about, like, composition and the understanding of the game and just how much you can swing something in your favor. I think we managed to follow the bells really well on that one as well. I'm quite proud of that too. Uh, I'll have to watch the VOD. I don't know how much camera blinking there was going on, but I think it was okay. Red re threw this somehow, says Evolutes. Yeah, I, what do you guys think? How did they throw that though? How did they throw that? That's what I'm quite curious about. All right, so moving over to the lobby. <clears throat> Just waiting for the players to load in now. We are looking at Cold Foamers on red this time. I think Terminal Gloaming were on red last time, so we'll have to uh, pay attention there. Um, for some reason, the red... I mean, I've broken it again. It was definitely okay before. Come on, Cold Foamers. I want to, there you go. Cold Foamers I, I can't say now. So let's have a look at the Cold Foamers. First of all, they have their, fire brand, uh, their uh, Scourge. Pretty standard stuff going on there. I don't really see anything too different. Could be running Sandswell and things, but they're, just like they're going for it. They have the big juice on their Chrono. I'm going to put that as a back noder for now. They have their Hollow uh, over here, who definitely will be seeing a lot in the team fights. Uh, we have K-Pop Star here um, on the Bursty Greatsword builds. Why don't I see K-Pop Star's name anywhere? Red player four. I guess it broke. I guess we don't get to see K-pop star's name for some reason. I guess it broke. That sucks. Red player four. Maybe I've messed something up here, but it looks like I, it looks like we're not going to get their name. That's a shame. Uh, oh my god, I've wasted so much time now, and we don't get um. The fifth player here. What's going on? What the hell? Meanwhile, the enemy team we'll have to have a look at in a second. Oh my god, they're very roam heavy though. What the hell is this? I can't believe it. Uh, so this is a little bit of what they look like. There you go. That's the that's the blue team there. Watching the opening split. Sorry guys, I'll have to figure this out. There's some little technical issues here. Moving the opening splits here. We're going to be watching Cold Foamers as they uh, come on out of the gate. Um, opening split, we got Mesmers picking up close on both sides. It's probably Kronos. We also see a Thief on the Aggress very, very quickly. Big Juice notices it and tries to zone him a little bit. That Thief's actually going to go for a 1v1 against the Chrono there. Uh, that'll be interesting to see how that goes. Um, well, not Chrono, actually. I think it's uh, a Comedy Mez over on that node. Moving on, uh, we've got the mid-fight exploding open. Don't forget the uh, Cold Foamers, extremely adept at these team fights. We've been seeing them do very well on all of them so far. And look at the health bars immediately. Cold Foamers, much, much more healthy. The only Cold Foamer low on health is their one engaged in a 1v1 back and close, that being K-Pop Star. Uh, their Scourge starting to actually take a lot of pressure. A huge burst comes down on the Scourge. Can the uh, Firebrand support actually get to it in time? 
Uh, for any kind of reason, no, not at all. So here we see actually that the uh, Tyrion Swarm are on a very, very bursty comp and snapping that kill on the Scourge out, then snapping a kill out on the um, the Firebrand support afterwards. That mostly just leaves the Hollow here. They did get them very low, but basically I think we're seeing an Atrophy team fight versus a Burst team fight. And the guys with the Burst actually ended up managing to secure that. So really well played team fight from Tyrion Swarm there, there. Tyrion Swarm also picking up their close because they were unaggressed and winning their 1v1 over here. That's a three cap for Tyrion Swarm straight off of the start. The respawning um, Cold Foamer's Scourge now trying to reclaim it with his Firebrand support just quickly rotating through now. We can see him here. This is actually a plus two here. This is the regroup that we see that uh, Cold Foamers are going for. They do not want to get farmed like they were farming uh, before. And uh, they start to push together. We watch the Firebrand Scourge support here on the roads. Looking at the minimap, you can see the entire team is around near their base, except a single roamer of theirs. We're going to zoom all the way across the map here, guys. Look at this. Who has managed to split the enemy team. K-pop star doing this perfectly. Pulls the enemy team. He's plus two over here. This plus two. Unfortunately, he dies to it. If that port worked, oh my god, that port would have been amazing because he would have got the neutralized and everything. Instead, he goes down and he allows the uh, Tyrion Swarm to get a beast. That's a real uh, momentum shift further for them. But because all of the players have been caught over there on this side of the map, in theory... Cold Foamers can come into this team fight again. So the team fight reestablishes itself. Uh, Cold Foamers do outnumber Tyrion Swarm here. You'd expect them to win that quite quickly. The other story, though, is the 1v1. We did see that the Big Juice lost his previous. I don't know. He didn't. So last time, K-Pop Star was on the defense. Um, and the Big Juice was at the team fight. It looks like that the Cold Foamers have actually made a swap there. Since K-Pop Star lost his 1v1 against the Thief Harass. Uh, they've gone for the swap. K-pop star was actually on respawn there anyway. Going back to the team fight. Uh, neutralization has at least landed. Two bosses have fallen, by the way. I don't know which team got this one, but certainly we saw... Actually, I think Tyrion Swarm took both, right? Because they're on so many points right now. So uh, having that extra roaming capability has been really strong for them. Team fight looking not good for the Cold Foamers at all right now. Look at how much how many points behind they are. Their Firebrand support goes down. Their Scourge support goes down. Their Hollow DPS goes down. This is the trio. This is the dream three-way uh, three way, way to run a team fight. And all of them were just destroyed. Uh, and I think it's because they can afford to be outnumbered. The double thief over on Terry and Swarm, they can just push, snap out that mid fight, and then quickly rotate off. Look at how quickly they get from the winning mid fight position over here to harass the big juice, defending the only remaining cold foamer node. Beautifully dodged back on there, by the way. Really nice to see that. He's still got his other sword for sword for. A lot of utilities up, even the gravity well. The support respawns and gets in as well. So we do see that the uh, cold foamers aren't being completely aced here. They can at least sustain this for a short while. And again, meanwhile. While on the other side of the map, flying right the way through, we can see K-pop star doing exactly what they should be. Scoring a neutralization, splitting the opponents, causing pluses to happen elsewhere. Uh, the Hollow actually deciding to reinforce this. Hollow will be going for a plus on that. By doing that, though... Um... Oh, and by the way, they got a kill. So, excellently done here as well. One of the thieves playing very aggressively in enemy territory right in the uh, doorstep of the Cold Foamers as they respawn. He actually got punished there. So, we see another kill come through the for the Cold Foamers. We've actually seen five kills for the Cold Foamers? Five? I haven't seen a single one of those. Where have those kills been coming from? What? Wow. I can't. I cannot wait to rewatch these VODs and see these kills that I've been missing. Five round scourge support caught in no man's land. Not uh, got the big enough balls to go for the mid fight. Caught miles away from actually being able to save their ally. This is uh, pretty incredible stuff here. We're seeing Nani Yamamoto basically uh, wreak havoc on the cold foamers close point. Winning these constant fights, right? Almost got full cap there. Look at him jump back in as well right at the last second here. Absolutely balls deep. Knows that the Firebrand Scourge support are desperate to be elsewhere. These two players, they don't want to be here plussing the ally that's dying a lot. They want to get up to mid. They want to move together. It's too much of a time investment. So what happens? Basically, they're left to see if the Big Juice and K-Pop star can actually deal with themselves. Um, and it looks like they can't. They, it actually looks like they might not be able to. Moving on, Firebrand uh, Scourge support as well, dying before they even get to mid. Uh, and with that kill there, I think, honestly, we've seen the momentum completely fall away for the Cold Foamers. 11 kills for Tyrion Swarm, about to tick up to 12, and only 5 manifesting for the Cold Foamers. Tyrion Swarm played very well, and actually, I think this is great, right? Like, you can see, look at how much better the Tyrion Swarm have managed to actually, using this very fast, heavy rotation comp. Swing these team fights. So was the Magi amulet nerf too much, I wonder? Is Firebrand Scourge support too easy to out-rotate and too little impact in a big team fight at this point? 
I wonder. I wonder. Because we also had the Scourge cooldown nerves as well, right? Uh, another beast goes, by the way, for Tyrion Swarm over here. I haven't watched them killing those, but another 25 points. Uh, looking pretty gross. K-pop star dies out right near the front of Keep. <clears throat> And, uh, and yeah, I think uh, we're watching once again the Big Juice on the defense here. I love his name, by the way, the Big Juice. Big Juice on the defense. And um, just scared of uh, basically being re-harassed here. Doesn't have a portal to hold it. He goes and uh, he went for the steal on Svan here, by the way. That's kind of funny. Going for the steal, the random star for auto does leave him open for a decap. K-pop star gets on instead because he just respawned after being killed on keep. We have seen sides flip. Uh, I mean, I'm very low energy right now because Cold Foam is, uh, you know, they got a bit of a battle to fight here. If K-pop star wins this 1v1, Cold Foamers might be able to manifest something here. Uh, earlier, we did see the hollow invested to blue spawn. And that seems to have worked out for them. They did actually secure that. Did I have big mini map the whole time? That might be a bit too much camera movement. 10 angles in 15 seconds. What, me? I didn't swap that much up, did I? Oh, it's mostly just because... I mean, I, have, I haven't been sticking on engagement for ages because I was just trying to give you like a broad map thing. Maybe I should... If, if health bars still appeared while you were zoomed out at this scale, it would be really good. Because you could basically cast by showing like big style stuff like this. This would be really good actually. But they'll only show if you're quite close. So that's a bit of a shame. Oh, but there you go. Terrian Swarm taking the win. 16 kills to 5. Um, looking at the uh, timeline here. Uh, yeah, 5 kills never manifested. Only 1 kill manifested. And we caught that. There was only 1 kill. The kill counters are broken. Hopefully CVPCS sees this. But there was only 1 kill for the uh, the Cold Foamers. I thought there was only 1 kill. And that's what we're looking at there. I forgot to do highlights. Oh, I forgot to do highlights. I'm so sorry, guys. Um, yeah, there was only 1 kill. So I don't know actually about this. I'm not sure what... Uh, what happened there but cvpcs will hopefully uh resolve that it looks like it tracked the blue team's kills very well but it just looks like it, it got a bit confused with the red ones at some point where they flicked up a bit maybe he can find some way of diagnosing that um but yeah they scored one kill so it's actually one kill to like 16 or whatever it was i don't know we could count these one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen so it actually looks like it counted two extra blue kills maybe and uh, four extra red kills. So it does look like it broke that just a little, 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 little bit. Let's go back to the lobby because we didn't really get a very good look at this before, did we? Um, and let's load out this map. Uh, that was the finals of Balthazar's Brawl. I forgot to do the final epic music as well. But don't worry, we've got cool theory craft for how we can improve that. Um, yeah, and I don't know why. But basically, it looks like two of the players are not actually registering on the, the thing. So I'll have to resolve whatever that is as well. They messed up with the overlays there. But yeah, uh, we see... Uh, I didn't really get to inspect the blue team's builds either. I'm pretty sure one of them was Pistol Pistol, I think I saw that. Um, but you can see how just very he rotation heavy they were. They were fielding Firebrand support, actually, weren't they? Scourge, Scourge Firebrand. So they were fielding this combo... It's just that instead of running any other, like, bruisery DPS, they just kept it purely about the Scourge. And then elsewhere, they had, like, a single Duelist. And then they just, they they went double Roma, right? So this was a double Roam comp. So obviously we're going to see some Farpoint aggress on this one. Well, no, not obviously. But certainly a lot of decaps we would have seen, I think. Um... Yeah, and they got kind of destroyed there, actually. So, Balthazar's Brawl, guys. Pretty interesting tawny, actually, that one. I feel a little bit bad for the Cold Foamers, because they, they they worked very hard and were clearly competent at the game. Um, but, yeah, so going back to the tournament uh, lobby here. That's Balthazar's Brawl, guys. The match history revealing itself. We started off with Harry Potter, the two ones, one Horcrux team at the Chamber of Secrets. Uh, they were eliminated immediately. In the quarterfinals, we saw Cold Foamers uh, lose. I think that was who we were following. The Cold Foamers lost to the other Cold Foamers, as far as I remember. 
Then our cold foam has got all the way up through the semis, knocking out the uh, terminal gloaming. And try hard trash cans. Try hard trash cans. I'm sorry I never saw you. I really want to watch the try hard trash cans next time. Uh, and cold foam is taking the win. Uh, so there you have it. That was Balthazar's brawl, guys. No uh, replays, but I do have instant replays set up and very well set up. Here, I'll, I'll actually demo it. We'll just do a bonus bit of the stream here. I'll, I'll show you guys what it looks like, okay? Um, so we will spectate some 1v1s here, okay? We're gonna hi we're gonna watch three 1v1s and we're gonna highlight when the 1v1s end, all right? So easy turbo versus guardian art this looks like here. As long as they actually start. They were a five Mesmer team, were they? <laughs> oh, okay. So look, 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 the burst comes in. Whoa, guys, that was a crazy cool moment. What? Okay, so we highlight that shit. Okay, that should work. Please tell me that that works. Yes, it worked. Okay, cool. So yeah, we'll see what that looks like later. Okay, cool. So now we're going to spectate this guy. The next person that goes down, we will highlight, right? For an action instant replay. Goodness. I just need to remember to do it in the middle of the cast. Okay, so uh, there you go. That's the down state and we'll do another one there. Okay, so now that I've done that All we have to do is go back to the tournament lobby We'll just load that up for a second. Okay now uh, Here's what happens At least uh, as far as I I hope this should work. Okay, so basically we just click this And we should see it come up <clears throat> It would just be on a little bit of delay. Boom, there you go. So we can watch uh, this burst come in. So he was standing around, he was fine. We see Delta around the side. This is in slow mo, by the way, as well. So we get the slow mo burst. Boom, the mirror blade doesn't quite die. We can even analyze a little bit as to why maybe the what the full one shot doesn't go in. So let's rewatch this just a little bit here. As he comes in, the mancha comes down. I don't know, it looks like maybe he just didn't have a very good uh, good shatter there. But there you go. So there's the burst. And then the other highlight we watched as well. So there was this one. Watching in the slow-mo. Oh, it looks really laggy on my end. Maybe it's not for your end though. It, it might look a little bit laggy for, for our end. So we see that it is the mind rack that scores the kill there. And anyway, so look, we basically get 15 seconds of slow-mo goodness to sort of uh, re-watch whatever it was that was going on. Is this Stellaris music? No, there's no Stellaris music on this lobby. This is uh, actually Guild Wars 2 music. This is uh, Timey's Game Part 2. I was recommended this track. Uh, who recommended me this track? Someone recommended me this track. It's whoever it was, uh, I was thinking. So there you go. That's, uh, we can do that. And what we'll do in the finals is if we ever catch a good moment, we'll, uh, we'll do that. Yeah, it's in the Mistlock Sanctuary, but it was originally used in Season three in that instance where you go to Tiny's, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Tiny's home. Or whatever the fuck. No, uh, you know, she builds that, like, super adventure boxing. There's a, there's a slightly more S-A-B-E sounding thing. Uh, but yeah. Alright, so, uh, any, any feedback, anything people want to hear, uh, or talk about just before I close this Balthazar's ball down? I might be back for, uh, the next tourney, which would be Melandru's match up? No, Grant's game is next. So this is the big EU one, basically. When we look at this on EU, we see that lots of people joined this, actually. We had 16 teams on the last Grant's game, so maybe I'll do that. I really want to watch some of these other ones with you, though. Melandry's matchup obviously being a fun one. Lister's Legions as well. I really want to watch these. Uh, Call Miss Clash still two weeks away, so I don't know. We, we'll, we'll try and get another one of these in today. Um, but i got LP episodes and things to do as well. Alright, doesn't seem like people have too much to say. So there you go, guys. Let me know what you think. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks for uh, turning up at this odd hour. And uh, I'll see you for another cast. Uh, if you're finding, by the way, can I just say, if you're watching this and you're thinking, eh, is it really that good? Tell me why. Because that, that I'm, I'm confident a lot of you guys are thinking that right now. So if that's what's going through your mind, try and diagnose why. And uh, let me hear it so that we can figure out how to unpack this a little bit more. So yeah, that's it. Cheers, guys. I'll see you next time.